Yes, 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 everybody. Welcome. This is your boy, Bo. Welcome back to some more Truth and Facts Sports Talk. All right, shout out to the movement and everybody's moving with us. Shout out to Three Kings Box, where you go and get all the latest degrees and everything that's going on in the sport of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited because I have with me today a former world champion. Uh, one of the reasons why women's boxing is the way it is. She does it all. She's a mother. Uh, she's beautiful enough to be a model. She's a, she, she's a wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you. La Amazona, Hannah Gabriel from Costa Rica. How you doing, Hannah? <laughs> I'm doing great. And just to let you know, I'm still a world champion. I didn't lose my title in 154. So I'm still the champ here. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I, you know, I'm so sorry. I thought when you went up in weight, because, you know, in the men's division, if you go up in weight, you got to give the title up. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I, uh, I, was, I was given the permission from the WBA. Um, you know, in this, in this sport, when, when you're uh, women, there's not many opportunities and there's not a lot of money involved. Mm. So, um, you know, some, some um, sanctioning bodies are mm. able to recognize that the effort that we do to our whole career, um, some, you know, sometimes it's not worth it to lose it. It's just, you know, in a fight that is just uh, searching for new opportunities, you know? Most so uh, mm. I was given the permission from the WBA, which I'm very grateful and happy to say that I'm still the champ in 154. Okay, you are still the champ at 154. In other words, really, you know what she's saying? She's saying that y'all can still get it. That's what she's saying. She's saying y'all can still get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> now, let me ask you, um, what is it that you woke up one day and you said, you know, I know I'm beautiful. I know I could be a model. But I want to get punched in the face. What, what is it that made you decide to pick up the gloves? <laughs> well, I've never thought that I'm beautiful like that, so I don't think mother will, will be like the road to go. Um, but um, I, I think that when you're uh, an athlete, you have to recognize that the sport is is a very short career. It doesn't matter what you do. It really depends on the opportunities that you get and how much you care and take care of your body and, and you know, your integrity and stuff. But um, you always have to get prepared for life. Um, I think it's a, a bad habit of the young um, to think that, you know, this is it. Because sometimes you, some, sometime in that uh, and very soon, uh, we'll get older and um, necessity will come and you have to be prepared. Mm. You know, if you if you want uh, quality of life, if you want to be um, living your dreams and feeling satisfied with the decisions that you've made, you have to dedicate yourself to do other things, to learn other things, to prepare yourself and explore uh, everything that has, that God has given you, um, um, you know, your abilities and stuff. I think that when I decide to, uh, retire, I will try to finish my career, um, physical therapy. Mm. I do want to be a, a life coach. I do a lot of motivational speaking, which I love. I love motivating people and helping, and I love to see them victorious. And um, I also have plans to be uh, a teacher so I can help my daughter um, with school and stuff like that. You know, when they, they're teenagers, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that they have um, to deal with, and I want to be close to her, and I want to help her uh, in the best way I can. So... I have a lot of a lot of plans. Um, I uh, two weeks ago I started my my garden, and um, I have a brother that he is um, uh, like um, I don't know how you say in this in uh, ingeniería. 
uh, agrónomos, you know, like um, farming and, oh. and all those kinds of things. So he and I um, might get into that business, you know. So mm. I have a lot of plans. I'm just trying to um, make the money. And uh, we'll see. We'll see which road we take. But I'm really excited about the things that might come. I'm always open to whatever God has for me because I know it doesn't matter what you decide that you're going to do. If you if you really commit to it and if you learn, if you're willing to open your mind and work, it will happen in time. It will happen. Now, you know, you, 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 you got all these things that, that you want to do. Let me ask you this. Um, uh, in the sport, we're starting to see a, a really emergence of attention is being paid that's being paid uh to women's boxing and you're starting to see a lot of women doing so many different things when it comes to boxing whether it's in the ring out the ring at the top corporate office matchmaking writing things of that nature um what does it mean when you see these changes taking place because when you first started out boxing they wasn't there now that you're looking at these changes mm -hmm. taking place what does that mean when you see that do does it give you hope for the next generation of female fighters Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, first, when I I see those things, I I feel grateful um, for the decision that the women in my past, you know, in the past made, you know, when they decided they wanted to uh, get into this business and do their thing. It doesn't matter in which area. Um, I feel grateful for them because everything that they've done has prepared the the ground for me and for all the women that you know that is uh, that are boxing today and and are in, that are involved in the business today so you know how life and the cycle goes mm -hmm. um things will get better for women in the future and um, i think that as long as we can as long as we are able to show our professionalism, as long as we are able to show people that we are evolving, that we really want to be treated uh, and to be valued, and we go that road, things will change and in the near future for, for everybody. We know, I think I am not going to be a part of the generation that enjoys a good, good payday, but um, it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, I've gained so much through boxing, and in this these years that are, you know, my final years because I'm already 35 and I want to fight until I'm around 38 or 39. I really want to uh, get the very best out of me technically. Uh, you know, when it comes to technical, uh, the technical part, uh, I really want to focus on on getting that um, them skills that everybody will be like, ah, oh, you know, I I used to love when Hannah fought it and and the way she moved and all that stuff. I yes, I want I want people to talk like that about me. <laughs> well, they kind of talk. Okay, we're not enjoying the big payday. Actually, they kind of talk like that about you now, um, and that's what I, I want to touch upon. That you was, you know, you 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 get you get into boxing and you go on a hot win streak like you did. Then you take your first loss, but right after your first loss, I'm gonna make sure I get this right. But after your first loss, you come back and you get a TKO. How? Because most fighters, when they when they when they suffer their first loss, they're not the same. How did you prepare yourself? What did you do to get yourself back into that mind frame? Of, okay, it's just a loss. Chalk it up as a loss and keep moving. Listen, it was very, very difficult. I think because after my first loss, I was getting ready to to for for the um, for the rematch, and I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So now, not only I lost, but then I went into a, a, another a, a route, you know. And when I have when I had my baby, 
I couldn't have her naturally uh, because I have a condition in my uh, uterus, so I had to have a C-section. Okay. A month and a half later, I decided I wanted to get back in training because I boxing is, you know, my my that's how I make my money and that's how I live. So um, it was really a, a worry for me, um, my my daughter's future, and I thought I had also a responsibility to show other women that becoming a mother was um, wasn't wasn't a limit, you know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a reason for you to let go on the things that you love to do and the things that you should be growing. So it was very very difficult because um, that day that I went running, I remember my C-section was still fresh. It was a month and a half only after the C-section, and I always make jokes about this, but I had those um, boobs. They were big. They were heavy. Like, I never had them before. And so I went out running, holding my 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 C-section and holding my breast. And I went running like like there was no tomorrow. And like I didn't have 10 months without doing anything. And apparently, I, I think there were 15 minutes. I like to say they were 15 minutes, but probably were like seven minutes later. I am pretty sure I was, I saw Jesus. He was calling me. <laughs> um, I, almost, <laughs> I almost passed out. And um, I remember going back home, feeling, uh, feeling uh, defeated. Mm-hmm. I felt. Uh, so, um, when, you know, the 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 opposite of of hopeful. Def- How do you say? It? Deflated. You felt deflated. Okay, because about my future, and um, I was really scared. I remember that day. I tried the whole day because that's when I realized that my body had changed so much, and I didn't know if if I have the strength, if I had the strength to get back to be a, a professional athlete and do what I, you know, what I'm doing at that level. But um, one of the things that I, I think I have at my best is that it doesn't matter if I don't believe that I can do it, I will still go every day and train and try to do it. And I think that's that's the reason that I was able to eight months and eight months later, ten months after my daughter was was born, to get back in the ring and um, get uh, get my title back and all that stuff. Now you it know it was very difficult. I'm glad you said that because you get your title back, right? You win your title back, you get them back, you become a unified champion now. Now. It's different amount of pressure, and as you going up the ranks, the woman that you lost to, you're about to face them again. Tell me, what were you feeling when that when your hand was raised in victory? How did you feel at that moment, knowing that you avenged that loss? <laughs> it was a great feeling. It was it was it has a lot of a lot of things because. Um, before the that fight in Castillo, a week and a half before that fight, I lost um, somebody that I used to love so, so, so much. And it was a big part of my life. And um, she died, and I, was, I wasn't able to get back um, to, to recover emotionally. So... It's not an excuse, but it really affected me, and I wasn't, I wasn't in a fight mode, you know. Mm. So when the opportunity came for me to fight Castillo again, I was, I was, I really wanted to fight her a long time before, but my team didn't want me to take that fight. To be honest, um, Castillo is very, very strong, 
and they were afraid that I wasn't ready. You know, it was it was a, a moment, especially for my husband. Um, people usually said, you know, how do you do it? I, if, if it was my husband or if that was my wife, I wouldn't be able to handle it. And that's how my husband felt about it. He he was a little afraid. And um, right before we took that fight, I sat down with him. And he said, I don't think you should take it, not now. And I said to him, you remember when you lost against Uchiyama? And, and he gave me that those eyes. <laughs> and I said, um, would, would you like to, you know, would you like to take that back? And um, then he he looked down and he said, okay, if you want to do it, we'll do it. Because he did, uh, he, he finally understand that it was a thing that I had to do. So um, I, I didn't really take many chances with Oxandia because she is very strong, and she did um, knock me down like the first fight in the second round. Um, but I was ready to go um, all the round. I knew that she could take me down, and I I embraced that. I just knew that I will get up and that I will do whatever was in my hands um, to get that victory. And it's funny because that, that fight, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, um, Noxandia was uh, uh, doing a, ma- more pressure and all that stuff, but boxing is just not about um, punching, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, new, it's, it's about not. being smart also. And so I met her. I made I made her miss a lot, and um, I wanted to I wanted to be a very intelligent fight, and I think I did it. And um, we were victorious, and I felt good. I I. I felt like I, she finally had to fight with the Hannah Gabriels that she should should have fight on that day, you know, not not the devastated one. Right, so, you you felt like she 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 got to fight the best of you. Yeah, exactly. So you appeal to your husband. <laughs> You appeal to his ego <laughs> to get him to understand what, what you want. <laughs> I have to, man. You know, because only only when you're um, a fighter mm-hmm. and you know and you have lost, you understand that. Um, you understand that. You do. It's like you need to do it. You need you to do. prove to yourself, you know that that you know that they're actually they actually won because they're better. But if they're, but if they're not, then then no. <laughs> yeah, because your husband's a fight. former fighter. If, uh, your husband's a former fighter himself. Yeah. yeah. Actually, my husband is an active fighter right now. Oh, he okay. He just signed with um, he just signed with Top Rank, and he'll fight September fourteenth oh, in Los Angeles. Wow. Los Angeles. Wow, that's that's going. So he's fighting September fourteenth. So. Let me ask you this. You have, I believe you have a little girl. You have a daughter? Yes, four years old. Would you you let her become a fighter? Oh, I let her do whatever she wants to do. Okay. I think that when you're a parent, you have to respect the fact that your kids are different individuals. And, um... Whatever makes them happy, you have to accept. Mm-hmm. And the only responsibility that you have with them, um, I'm sorry, the only right that you have over them is a big responsibility to teach them, to give them the tools for them to deal with life and people the very best they, they, they can. And because, you know, life is not guaranteed for anybody. So I might get out, out of my house tomorrow and, and die and, and she'll be left with the tools that I've, I've, I've left her, you know? Yes, yeah. So um, that, that's the only, they're, they're, we are, they're not ours, they're borrowed. And uh, 
I think that the only thing that I wouldn't like her to do is to stay at home and, um, how do you say desperdiciar? I'm sorry, you what did you say? Oh, stay at home and rest. Desperdiciar is like, oh, oh, uh, not take advantage of life. Right. You know, that's the only thing I wouldn't accept her to do. Just sit home. And yeah, yeah just sit at home and just, you know, yeah, uh, yeah be dis- uh, uh, disappointed herself enough. with life. I want her to, yeah, I want her to go out there and explore it. All, all the gifts, you know, and I want her to feel um, great about life and and be excited about, you know, the surprises that, that you find on the way when you're trying hard and when you're working hard for something and the satisfaction. I like her to feel that in any area that she likes. Okay. If that is boxing, that's fine. She'll have the best plan yourself. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, like, I think it would be, I think a part would be, a part of you probably would be proud because you'd be seeing the progression, but I think the mother inside you would be a little worried when you see her actually getting in there getting hit. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think, um, listen. Like I said, we are all individuals and uh, we decide which road we want to take and the risk that we are willing to take as well. So um, I think that when you when you when you choose a sport like boxing, where there's a lot of a lot of things at risk, uh, you have to know that you you really have to be committed to do the very best at everything, so that you have less possibilities of um, getting the worst part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that you have all those risks in anything that you decide to do is just life. And you cannot be afraid of that. And you cannot, and you cannot um, put on your kid your, your, um, how do you say miedo? Fears. Uh, when you're, huh? Fears. Well, yeah, your fears. Exactly. Because um, it, 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 it doesn't belong to them, you know? Yeah. So we all have to know that um, when, you, when you are doing something, there's good things about it and bad things about it. You can be prepared for it. You can, you can take it uh, from the horns and do the best that you can. But um, you will never be able to avoid, uh, you know, the, the punches of life. You will have to take them and make them yours. It doesn't how it doesn't matter how it comes. Yeah, because life will always hit you. Uh, life will ho- always hit you harder than any opponent <laughs> you ever face. <laughs> exactly. That is. So, yeah. That is also true. It will always. Oh, okay, that's that's. And you know the pain. The pain is temporal, temporarily though. I always, I always thought since I do motivational speaking and I work with women and and kids that are in, in social risk and stuff like that, you know, work are much more hurtful and damaging than any punch that you get. So um, there's a lot of a lot of things that are worse. And you cannot live your life feeling uh, afraid of the pain and the problems, and and you have to react to it. You have to be willing to deal with it. That's mm-hmm. the only way to get stronger. Yes, you can't hide. You you can't you you can't hide from life. It it, it it's gonna find you <laughs> no matter what rock you hit. It's gonna find you. Um, exactly. Let you know. Now let's talk about. I, I saw your fight with Clarissa Shields, and when you knocked her down in that first round, I was like, whoa. And it was clear when you watched this fight, she's never seen someone like you. Like, And I have to say, your footwork in that fight was amazing. Your defense was on point. Your ability to counterpunch was there. I, I, at, you. at, at your age that you're at now, and competing with you know you know these young up and come hungry fighters, 
How do you maintain that physical ability to do what you do still at this at, at you know at, as at this higher phase of your career? Listen, I think it was hard work because um, uh, definitely age keeps you. Every time that the the year passes, every time that I have a birthday, I'm like, oh my god, I feel so much more tired. <laughs> It's not the same as when I used to train at 25, 27. It is definitely a big difference. But um, I think it is all about the focus. It is all about the goals that you have. And that um, that defines um, how much you are willing to put in, you know, uh, how much work, um, how much commit, uh, if you're committed or not. and. Um, my my prince my uh my real goal is to be the very the very best version of myself um as a boxer possible you know i i didn't have an amateur career so i i was way behind from everybody because I didn't have the school. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have the time to correct a lot of things. All the bad habits um, and the, the, the bad habits that, was, that were, wasn't corrected at the time, I took them from me into my professional career. So um, it, is, it has been uh, a goal of mine to get better um, technically. Uh, that's how you say it? Yes, that's how you say it. Technical wise. I really want to to box. I always say box like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's what I, I, I would like for, um, you know, people to say, oh, she can box. And when they actually know my uh you know get to realize that my back my background is different from everybody that i didn't have an amateur career and stuff to i i would like them to understand that it takes a lot of work a lot of practice to get to that to the point that i am without um that background you know okay and um that that fight with clarissa it was it was uh, a little surprising because I thought that she was going to box more, you know, since she has three times more experience than me in that in that sense. But I guess after the knockdown, um, it was we say it here um, in Spanish. We say it would be blood of or boogers. So you say <laughs> and you cry a lot, you know. <laughs> These blood are buggers. Yeah, I want to be blood. <laughs> I don't want to be crying because I love. <laughs> oh, blood so, um, I, uh, you know, the the fight was a little different from what I expected. I expected her to be aggressive and everything, but I didn't expect it to be a little uh, disorganized. Mm. Um, but um, I think it was um, it was. It was pleasant because um, I remember in one of the posts that I I made, you don't you have no idea how difficult it is to work in silence when your opponent is talking trash. Mm. And uh, she was doing a lot of that. She was saying she was actually saying to people because people would say, "Oh, she's beautiful," and she would say, "Oh, yeah." They take a picture because you know after I'm done with her, there will be only your um, a, a memory of that and stuff like that. Which I don't really care. But um, then she used to say, she said that I was smaller, that I was, that she was faster, that she was younger, that she was stronger, and that you know that I didn't have an opportunity, and that I was just. Uh, you know, it, it, she thought that it was going to be an easy fight. Mm. And uh, when you take all those things in consideration, 
uh, and you see the fight that it that it went down. There's no loss for me. It is all a victory. Okay. This journey of mine has been difficult, and I remember saying, you know, I'm I live in a country where being an athlete is not a privilege. And uh, one of her fans say, oh, do you know her story? Do you know about her story? This, she's not privileged. And I'm not saying she is privileged in life. We are, I think we are, most people is not privileged in life. Mm -hmm. But um, here in Costa Rica, I'm a world champion. And um, I, we, we don't have the attention. I feel it, 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 just, it's a little different. Um, it's not like, like you said, it's not that you're privileged, but it's a little different when you're a world champion outside of the United States of America. You don't have, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't have the, the press, you don't have the, the, that machine behind you pushing you like that. And, 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 and that is fine. But listen, um, one of these days, uh, a, a fan wrote me and she said, can you, can you sponsor me? I want. I really want to box, but I don't have sponsors. And I said, "Listen, I'm a world champion, and I don't have sponsors. If you, if you don't, if you don't want to invest in yourself, if you haven't even invested your own time into starting into it, how do you expect for anybody else to invest in you? You haven't even started. You're expecting for somebody to give you money for you to start. Mm. You know, and um." Uh, it's funny because uh, here in Costa Rica, um, uh, the the sport that is gets the attention is soccer. Yes. And this year, because of the World Cup, um, World Cup, yeah, because of the World Cup, we we had to do our, our training camp without sponsors and everything, which I thought it was okay, you know. Um, but it, it is definitely much more difficult for us than it is for her. I know that. And I'm a mother, and I'm a, a, a wife, and I do give classes in a, I have a job. I have to, I, I study also. I'm a lot more busier in life than she is. Um, so when you take all those things in consideration, like I say, it is uh, a victory all around because I don't think many people can do everything that I do and still fight at the level and still take chances like the chance that I took. So um, I feel very proud of what how do you, we did. How do you? How do you? Of course, there's a lot of things that couldn't be, couldn't, um, couldn't. Uh, we could be do better, mm -hmm. but. Um, it is always like that. How do you balance that? That's that's the biggest question I think everybody. How do you balance that? You're a wife. You're a mom. You're a world champion. You 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 you're inspiration. Like you said, you're teaching. How do you balance that? Like, do you go home some days and just flop down on the floor and like, oh, I'm dead. Don't touch me. Leave me here. <laughs> of course, <laughs> I think that anybody. <laughs> That anybody that is that busy uh, feels like that um, very often. But, you know, um, I start my day when I am training in training camp at 2.15 in the morning. And I finish it around 10.30 or 11 at night. So I actually get four hours to five hours to sleep, of sleep. And... Um, I'm a very spiritual person, and I believe that my um, rest is in God's mm -hmm. hands, and uh, you know that He will give me the the rest that I need for so I can function during the day. And uh, I think it's all, all all about love. I think it's about dealing with your day the best way you can, instead of of giving. Um, of being furious and, and you know how people say that a person that yells a lot or gets mad easily has a strong temper? Mm -hmm. 
temper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a quick temper. Uh, that's how we how do we, how would they say it? Quick temper. You have a quick temper. Yeah, in in Spanish they'll say a the the character for them, like if they're they have a strong, strong character yeah. or temper. But I always believe that when you are easy to to get upset, easy to treat people badly because you're tired, because you're you're mad, because you're you're having problems, you are actually a weak person, and you have a weak temper because mm. you're easily provoked to to hurt people, to hurt yourself. So um. I believe it's about being strong mentally and try to give the very best to the people that surround you and to recognize that um, it, it is not people's fault, the fact that you're so, so busy. Okay. You want you are so busy because you want to be that busy. That's true. Because you have to, because you are uh, trying to achieve this and you're trying to, to do that and you're trying to be the best of this and it is it is nobody's fault and nobody has to has to to, to take that That's uh, true. as their own. You know? So um I really I have the very best um support from my mom, my husband, um and I think um that that one makes things easy. If it wasn't for my husband or my mom or um, my my husband's mom and stuff like that. I don't think I will be able to do it. Now, you when know, I really, really, really need help, they're there for me. Now you know that's that because uh, uh, we actually went longer than what I thought. But you are just you're you're such an easy person to talk to. Any of you, um, we could probably get like another five minutes. But I want to ask you this: um, that support system. It's very important when you're starting out your career because, like you said, women's boxing, you don't get paid a lot. So that support mm -hmm. is very important, especially coming from, like you said, coastal. at least here in the United States, you have somewhat of a backing from, and I mean, from, from a money aspect. But like you said, you tell somebody, I'm a world champion, I don't have sponsors. So that support <laughs> is very important. Yeah. I know, definitely. Um, I think... Um, well, I don't know. When you see things from from our perspective here, you know how uh, we. I think that athletes in other countries have a privilege because they're seen uh, like people that what they are. They're uh, people that make an effort, that are deciding to take the hard road instead of the easy one. And stuff. But in Costa Rica, when when you um, when you're when you're an athlete, people think that you're wasting your time, and that's how we are seen. Um, I have right now a sponsor that has been working with me for a year, and um, yeah, I was saying that um, in Costa Rica, uh, people when you're deciding to um, being an athlete, people think you're waste, wasting your time, mm -hmm. and um, it is difficult when when people have that type of perspective because um, sponsoring and all that stuff, um, the chances for you for you to be in see for you to be seen as a positive role model is um, in that you know that you can be paid because of that is difficult, but. Mm. Um, even though I have only one sponsor at the time, I believe that uh, you always have to be grateful with the people that, uh, you know, gives you the hand. So they are the only ones right now, but they're very, very important in my life because without them, um, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. No, no. And um, it is, it is, it is a whole. It is a very challenging to to be an athlete and, and to to fight at this level um, and do all the things that I do. But I've proven that you can do it. 
So it is, it is, I think it's not all about the money or the support or, you know, um, how many people are with you or whatever. It's about the testimony of life that you can give to other people that probably are feeling that they can't do it. When they see you doing it, they find the strength and they find the truth about themselves as well, you know, that they're, that they'll be able to do it. We just have to work hard for it. You, you know, that's funny you say that because I've often said the boxing ring is a proving ground. You know, you might mm -hmm. think you're good. You might think you all that, but when you get in that ring, that's what we'll find out. And I'm, 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 I'm just thinking like, because, um, uh, like you said, uh, you know, life is all about um, being positive and, and recognizing some things. And you, you seem to always, like in interviews I see you in, even after the fight, uh, you know, like you said, during the time when, when Clarissa Shields was, was saying the things she was saying, you always seem to maintain that positive spirit. Um, yeah. Do you, think, do you think that can attribute to uh, because most 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 people on you know uh, as they grow up and the, it seems like the harder life is the more close to God you are. Can, do you contribute yeah. your spirit your your, your spiritual uh, positiveness from the support that you get and because of the hard times that you've had to go through and get past those things? Oh yeah, definitely. I don't know one person that has had an easy life that is a good person. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I know some of them, but they're and they're cool people because I think all of us have a, a nice and a good part. But mm. when you when you go through hard times, it really it really makes you have to deal with your own self. Mm. And um, I believe people have makes or we all make this big mistake about feeling that everything that that happened to us that has marked marked our life in a in a very hurtful way um, to feel like um, like this is like the worst and. And this shouldn't happen. It happened because it had to happen. And you have the opportunity to give a great testimony of how people can get out of all those things mm -hmm. or a great testimony of how people are being defeated by all those things. Mm. So um, I, um, when, when uh, in the interviews, they asked me why I was so positive and I was saying, I just discovered that God has great plans for all of us. I, there was a time of my life that I didn't think I was, I was worthy. And I didn't, I didn't believe I, I deserve, I deserve great things. Right. I didn't love myself. And this all became, it came from a sexual abuse when I was five years old. And when, when when those things happen, you actually think that there must be something wrong with you. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, you grow thinking that there is actually something wrong with you. And that's why you don't deserve good things. And that's why uh, you deserve people taking advantage of you and treating you bad. And, and you become self-destructive and... And all those things, but um, I I hit the bottom, and I that's when I surrendered to God, and I accepted in my heart, to accept Him in my heart, and um, I gave myself the opportunity to walk, uh, holding His hand, and see where He could take me, and mm -hmm. here we are. Wow. So you know, I would say to people, give yourself the chance. You might think you don't deserve it, but you're wrong. And wow. um, just hold his hand and and uh, trust him. He'll do great things. Yeah, yeah. Because you, um, like you said, um, that 
when you go through something like that at the age of five, like you said, the abuse, um, not just physically, mentally, it could mess with you in a way where it's even hard to even trust anybody. So you, you oh man, you're so right. That's you know, uh, I have a daughter, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. you you see the videos. <laughs> Me and we have we have fun, and I think that's like. <laughs> And and even now, like my daughter is eighteen, and I'll ask her. I'd be like, "Yo, did anybody ever touch you that, in in a place they weren't supposed to touch you?" And she'd be like, "For real? Are you serious?" <laughs> like, no, Dad, no, never. I'm like, okay, I just want to make sure, you know. And you're so right. And um, I think a it's part one of, of my it's one of my biggest uh, um, concerns, of course. Yes, because you know it happens, and it happens really quick. At yes. the moment, and with people that you you never thought that it will happen. Yeah. But um, you know, uh, it, I always said, I I was a victim that day. But you weren't a victim and for since life. I, since I since I took uh, that hand for for this journey, I wasn't a victim no more. Mm-hmm. I decided I was not going to be a victim of that, never again. Right. And um, it is great because um, people think that because I'm a boxer and, you know, they see me this strong woman and, you know, a guy will never reach, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, scream at her and stuff like that. They'll be afraid and all that stuff. Actually, that's the opposite. uh, Because you're tough (laughs) and you're strong, some men want to break you down. They they want to say, I want to be the one to break her. Exactly. Um, but, um, well, some people is like that, but you know how people, the people that is being, um, uh, I'm, I'm talking mostly of, of women that are being, that are having domestic violence. You know, they see me strong and they say, they have actually come to me and say, I want to be strong like you so that my husband stops hitting me. And it's funny because I said, it doesn't matter how strong you get. You're not supposed to get strong to to be able to fight him. Just live him. Uh, live those things that are hurting you and those things that are not making you better. You know, you should just walk away. It's yeah, not that, about that, getting strong. But that fear, you know, that that, and you was able to conquer it. But some sometimes the fear of that unknown, you know, that holds a lot of people back. Yeah. Yeah, I and it did for me as well because, okay. like I said, I didn't think I deserved things. So why would I try to do something good if I was going to get something bad? I used to run track and field since I was five, and that was the only thing that kept me uh, away from feeling worse. And um, I trained. Since I was five to till I was eighteen, but when I turned fifteen, fifteen years old, I had an injury that two or three years later made me retired. Okay. And um, I, I thought at the time, why would you do so much? Why would you sacrifice so much? Why would you dream, and things will never happen? Mm-hmm. And things will still go wrong. So that was my mentality. And then, you know, how when you become an adult, um, you go crazy when you're young. And then when you're having that mindset, you do a lot of uh, self-destructing. Uh, self-destructive things. And, and exactly. Exactly. So um, I was one of those persons. I always, I always say to people, oh, you're not talking to a, you know, um, a person that I uh, cling, 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 cling one. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of things, a lot of stupid things in my past, but that's why I can, um, that's why I can fit a lot of people's shoes and, and tell them, look them in the eye and tell them there's a lot more mm-hmm. for you than what you think. 
let me ask you this because we're approaching the end of the show. Uh, my daughter is, is standing at the door looking at me. You're supposed to be going to the movie. The movie don't start till 11, but <laughs> she's one of those. I want to be, you know, she want to she wanna get to the movie theater to sit down and relax before the show starts. But let me ask you this. Um, have you ever thought about switching trainers or are you one of those people that, hey, I'm loyal to those to, to those that are loyal to me? I never had a same trainer. I've changed trainers always. Okay. I had a lot of training. Uh, I take the good from them and the bad. Uh, the bad sometimes I take them because I think it's good. And I think that the best trainer I ever had is my husband. Hmm. Uh, but there is a still um, a process of, of I have to adapt okay. to his way of teaching. And uh, like I said, he had an amateur career. He had like a hundred and something fights and he already has uh, almost 40 professional fights and he's been a uh, world champion as well and all that stuff. His process or his um, background is a lot, a lot different from mine. So I'm, I'm, I'm to be honest and I'm learning. I'm just trying to be the very best. And he has so much knowledge that I just feel so lucky that I can, you know, uh, that I have access to that. So in the meantime, I'll be adapting. If I have to change trainer, uh, I'll do it. But I think it, there's there's many, very few people that have the, the blessing to share something like that with the person that they sh shared their life and that they love. Mm -hmm. So um, it wouldn't be my first option. I would rather go to hell with them. <laughs> and well, not to hell, you know. But, uh, <laughs> I know what you he, say. He'll go, he'll go to heaven with me. But uh, <laughs> what I try, I'm trying to say is I would rather to have this journey and make mistakes, whatever, in, in my future um in my future, uh, both trying to achieve mm -hmm. um, what he's able to do, than to be a, a, a normal and um, simple boxer. I okay. really want to get into that very difficult kind of stuff. And one last question. When your daughter gets older and she starts dating, when she brings her boyfriend over, are you going to take him over to the cabinet so he can see those championship boxing belts from mom and dad so he'll know to be on his toes? Because <laughs> mommy or daddy can knock your behind out. Well, listen, my husband is having problems with that already. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, he's, um, but I'll tell you a funny story just um, so the people can laugh a little bit. My husband loves video games, right? He loves to play uh, in his PlayStation and stuff. And he was playing um, Grand Theft Auto. And the the guy from that, from that game is is awful. He is awful. He looks terrible, and he do bad things. And my daughter, two days ago, she said to me, "You know that guy is is, is adorable." I like him. And I sent that to my husband, and he was like, oh, my God, break that game. I want to that stuff right now. And I was laughing so hard because I said, oh, you know, um, the future is not looking bright, though. It's not looking bright for us. But um, I'm just hoping that, I, that we can give her the tools to make a lot less mistakes than, we, than we've done. And I really... You know, I really want her to be patient, and I want her to value herself. I want her to love herself so much that only a person that can match that, you know, can have her. But we'll see. I'm well, just hoping that we can teach her to bear with that. Well, you know, the, the guidance, love, and, and spiritual guidance that you guys are giving her, that's what's going to carry it. Trust me. My Like I said, I have three. And all of my one thing all my kids know is you know they know daddy love them, and I just do the best I can. So as long as they know that, yeah. you know that's the important thing. Hannah, I want to thank you. I 
I can't wait till we do this again. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you and follow you if they have any questions or if they just want to just reach out to you and and just, you know, send their heartfelt uh, responses to some of the things you've said in, in the interview. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm in the Internet as Hannah Gabriel's official. Well, official like Spanish. Uh, so it would be official. It will be with one S, not two S. I think you write official with two S, right? In English? Yes, you do. And, uh, well, you have you find me as Hannah Gabriel Official in Spanish. And um, so in Facebook and Instagram, it's very difficult for me to sometimes to answer the comments or the messages because, like you... Like like you heard, I don't have a life. <laughs> I wake up too early and I go to sleep too late. But um, I I will try to answer and um, I just I just want to thank you all for listening to this and I'm just hoping that I can give a lot more fights that you can enjoy uh, because it's, it's it that's what boxing is all about. You know now that you see so many boxing fights that are boring it is just a privilege to be one of those fighters that can bring emotion and and um great stuff to a fight night so thank you so much for the support i hope that you enjoyed this interview i enjoyed it a lot and i thank you all because um it was great okay and i wish you luck in your um on your date with your daughter. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, of course, you guys know this is Truth and Fact Sports Talk. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Truth underscore Fact Box One. Also, um, go to ThreeKingsBoxing.com. You can catch some of my articles there. Uh, that's where I write uh, a lot of my articles there. And you can also catch this video actually uh, there too. So go to ThreeKingsBoxing.com. Check that out. Uh, Hannah. This has been great. Uh, I'm looking forward to us doing this again. Thank all you guys out there for your support, for listening. And, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Just uh, She's giving me that look. So, everybody, thank you guys for joining. Appreciate you being here. Hannah Gabriel, Truth and Facts, Sports Talk. We out.